all right, boss. Mm -hmm. Okay, but what about them two guys in that card game? Who are they? They just started, boss. Mm -hmm. There ain't no trouble yet. Yes. If you just let me handle things in my own way, and I take care of all the small crimes, all you, you have, have to do is look after the big boy. stuff, such as the law and that new preacher over at Mount Zion Baptist Church. Yeah. That new preacher. But it's your yeah. Boy, that joke of preaching ain't done our Sunday business no good at all. And I think we ought to stop. What do you mean, we? What do you think I'm paying you for? I know, boss. We tried to frame him two or three times, but he just won't go. I had a trap set for him last Thursday night, and he didn't even show up. What kind of a trap was it? Well, so I got gutsy to invite him over to dinner last week. I was thinking on her getting him drunk, and I could take some pictures of him, but no doubt. That was the right kind of trap, all right. But you use the wrong kind of bait. Gus has got good looks, big lips, and all that. But she's too old. You can tell most any man with an apple. But most of them like the apple you green. What do you mean, boss? I mean this. I want you to go down Keller Street and round up two or three of them little fly chicks and have them meet me down to the Silver Leaf Bob and Shine Parlor by Thursday this evening. Get that? I'm going to show you the kind of bait you use in your preacher's trap. Okay, boss. And don't forget, I want pig men. Understand? Okay, boss. Blessed is the man that talketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the river that bringeth forth fruit in his seed. His leaf also shall not wither, shall prosper. The ungodly are not so. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, the way of the ungodly shall perish. Godly, one must be godlike. And to be godlike, one must necessarily be pure in heart. Purity of heart was the very essence of Christ's message back. Come on, boss. It's about time for us to go. What time is it? About ten minutes to one. I hope those girls don't get cold feet. They'd better not. Come on, boys, let's go. Come here, Sanders. What is it, boss? I'm going out for a few minutes, and I want you to look out for the place till I come back. Yes, sir. Keep your eyes on the cash register. Yes, sir. Come on, boys. You got that right.
you ladies must be new to our congregation. We are. Yes, we are. And we enjoyed your services, too. We've come to find out just how we might go about becoming converted. Oh, yes, Reverend. We really do want to be Christian. I just think one can be a so much better person with religion. And we thought that you could possibly... Oh, but Reverend, we don't want to keep you from your dinner. The parking is just on our way. And we'll walk that far with you if you don't mind. How about it, girl? Let's do it. Sure. You know, man, ain't nobody in the world can beat the boss when it comes to putting a guy on the spot. It's really gonna be too bad. You sure do know. Because any pose of that baby talking Mabel gets that preacher in is going to be too much for his congregation and too bad for him. That's right. And is that all you want us to do, Reverend? It's just as simple as that. Well, I'd like to know who you are. And I hope you come back to church next Sunday. I'm Mabel, and of course you can expect me back. I'm Minnie. She's Mabel. But we have a few minutes to spare, and we might as well go in and let you tell us all about it right now. Don't you think? That's a good idea. That is, if you don't mind, Reverend. Oh, not at all. You're quite welcome. Do each of you ladies have Bibles? I, uh, no, Reverend, I haven't. Neither have I. I had one, Reverend, but someone stole it. Well, I'm going to give you each a New Testament. I mark the passages I want you to read. Fifth chapter of St. Matthew verse to 48th verse inclusive. Sixth chapter of St. Matthew, verse to 24th verse inclusive. Fifteenth chapter of St. Matthew, verse to 20th verse inclusive. Seventh chapter of St. Matthew, verse to 29th verse inclusive. And the sixth chapter of Romans, verse to 23rd verse inclusive. And I feel quite sure that if you will read and digest this much of the Holy Scriptures, it will do you young ladies a lot of good. And going to church will be a lot of fun with such a cute preacher in the pool. Oh, Mr. Oh, Miss. just call me Mabel. But really, I didn't mean one wrong thing by what I said. Honest, I didn't, Reverend. But you see, I never had a brother or any guy like other girls have, and no one has ever tried to teach me right from wrong before. And you are such a big, strong, and handsome man, and so I can... But I know. Say, what is this? You'll understand Mabel quite well with this under your belt. Thank you, Rev. Thank you. That was a beautiful pose. Thank you, Rev. That was a lily, Rev. That was a lily. Thank you. Well, Rev, here's the first pastor. That's clean, but more welcome. It's too bad, Rev, that you won't drink with us. This is your party, you know. You all ought to be ashamed of yourselves for offering that vile stuff to a minister of the gospel. Why, don't you know preachers don't drink whiskey? They drink gin. <laughs> Don't try to explain, Reverend. Brother Randall done told me about seeing these three girls follow you here. And little Willie told me that he saw two men getting in the back door of our apartment while we were having services. And I knew then that 
the devil was busy. I know what you're trying to do. And I know who's behind it. And I know why. And if you two men have any decency in you, you'll take that picture out of that camera now and burn it up. Come on, man. Let's get out of here. You don't get out of this house until you destroy those pictures. Come on, Joe. Keep from hurting this old lady. We better go out the way we came in. Come on, girl. She was really warm. She sure was. Come, Sister Caroline. A short stick is too poor a weapon to fight the devil with. Maybe it is, Reverend. But if I had any kind of stick now, that devil would have some busted horns. Don't you worry now. That scheme will work only over my dead body. You better come on over to the house and get some dinner. Chicken is done. Brother Randall's waiting. Betty Jean put the biscuits in the oven before I left. Come on, Reverend. Betty Jean worried about you. Oh, but Jasper, surely there must be some way out of this. Maybe you could just explain the whole thing to the church, and then no one would pay any attention to whatever those men might say or do. No, my dear. Not as easy as that. But the people of our church, they love you. They'd go to any list to help you. You must realize that. Human nature is not so generous, Betty Jean. I am only a servant to my people. A servant from whom much is expected. You see, to many of them, I am a slave, not a man. Therefore, to many of them, their affections are conditional. If this thing is exposed, I can never serve them again. They must be served, and that leaves me no alternative but to resign. Oh, no, no, you haven't had time to think. You can't do that. Now, don't cry, Betty Jean. Don't cry. We'll turn it all over into the hands of the Lord, and let his will be done. Betty Jean, why is she waiting on me tonight? Well, Betty Jean isn't feeling well. And besides, she don't like to wait on me. She don't like to wait on me. What's the matter with me? You're not a kind, Jim. <laughs> oh, I see. I'm not a preacher. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> What do you mean she's not my kind? She's colored, ain't she? Sure she is, but she ain't common. She ain't like them street walkers you sent over to the parsonage. She's decent, Jim. Like who sent over to which parsonage? What are you talking about? Jim, I know what happened at the parsonage today. And I know exactly who's behind it all, too. But you know, as well as I, that I'm not going to let you go through with it. Listen, Mama Carey, I've stood for a whole lot of your meddling my affairs, but this is too much. That darn preacher's been trying to put me out of business since the first day he came here. And you and that high brown niece of yours are trying to help him do it. This is my house and I don't want him here. This is just as much my house as yours. The Reverend Rose and Betty Jean are in love with each other. They are engaged to be married. And their love is nice and good and honest. Not like the love you find down on Teller Street. 
The Lord don't like ugly. Your real mother and your real father were killed by a tornado when you were only four months old. Me and Joe took you in and raised you up as our own son. Joe is gone now. He's gone to help. And I have been hoping that someday you'd change your ways and acknowledge Christ so we could all meet again in the hereafter. I have prayed both night and day that oh, you... Oh, I've heard all that for. I've heard all that for. You're not big Jim to me, son. You're just a poor, sinful coward with a lot of fools to do your dirty work. But I'm going to stop it. <laughs> and that's the promise. I suppose you're going to the law and try to have me arrested. No, son. I'm not going to the law. I'm going to one that's bigger than the law. I'm going to one that you can't drop. One that you can't kill much like him. I'm going to the Lord. Here. You better take this along with you. <laughs> Maybe the Lord won't like the way one of his male servants is carrying on down here in Yamakura. <laughs> <laughs> I have these also, Mama Carrie. <laughs> you didn't think I'd give you the last one, did you? <laughs> you know you read, Mama Carrie. And after all, you're a smart woman, you know.
But you kids will have to admit that he is cute. And if he could stop being a preacher long enough, I might let him come up and see me sometime. Gee, but I could really go to town with that guy. And if he could just come on, you know. Okay, you chick. The boss is ready to see you now. Come on. Ain't we been here all evening waiting on him? And furthermore, who do you think this is? Oh, don't get fly. Come on. taken you away from me unless he had a better place for you to go. I know you're safe in the arms of Jesus tonight, honey. But your Caroline's in trouble down here on earth. And she needs you. Yes, Joe. I need you right now. I know you can't leave from up there, Joe. And come down here and help me yourself. But you can go to my Lord and tell him that one of his faithful servants is in trouble and needs his help. He'll do that, Joe. I know he'll do it. I know he will.
Carrie. I'll take that package you've got behind you, Mama Carrie. No, Jim. I'm not going to give you these pictures. I'll die first. I said I'll take them. And if you don't give them to me, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Give them here. No, Jim. I won't. I said give them here. And I said no. Leave me alone. Give them here, I said. Help me. Give them here. Please, Give them here, me. I said. Stop. Give them here. I'll fix Stop. you. Help me. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Give them here, I said. Help me. Give them here. Please, Give them here, me. I said. Stop. Give them here. I'll Stop. fix you. Come on, get up. You ain't hurt. Aunt Caroline, oh, where are you, Aunt Caroline? Mama Cat, Mama Cat. Who is you, Mama Cat? Who is? Mama Cat. Mama Cat. Mama Cat. Who? Oh, Aunt Caroline, what's the matter? What's the matter with her? Who hurt her? I don't know. I come in here a little while ago, and she was lying down here on the floor. And the safe was open, and my money gone out there, and the window was open out there. I don't know. Somebody must have come in here and done a... I don't... stolen from the safe and $20 bill. And that being the case, why it won't take long for the law to trace the burglar. That's just the point. You see, Jasper, I don't believe there ever was a burglar. There's something strange about the whole thing. Something between Jim and Aunt Caroline. Oh, I know they quarreled because of those pictures, but I can hardly bring myself to believe he deliberately hurt her because of them. And yet, when I think of her just lying there, unable to tell us who hurt her and why. Yes, and about Jim, too, because I'm sure he had something to do with this. But you can't judge him unfairly. After all, you weren't in the room when it happened. Then, too, you must remember that the hand which casts a stone cannot be hidden from the Lord. God works in mysterious ways, my dear. And there is no doubting about it that he performs wondrous things. And in his own good time, he'll bring the guilty to justice. You're right, Jasper. God will take care. I know he will. Sister Caroline is trying to talk, Reverend. I think she's coming, too. Thank you, Brother Randall. I'll be right in. I think you'd better wait here. I'll be right back. I'm going home.
She's gone, Betty Jean. She's gone. Oh, Jasper. Resting in the arms of Jesus. Heartbroken son, weep no more. Grief stricken niece, weep no more. Left lonesome friend, weep no more. She's only gone home. Day before yesterday morning, God was looking down from his high heaven, looking down on all his children. And his eyes fell on Sister Caroline, tossing on her bed of pain. And God's big heart was touched with pity, with everlasting pity. God sat back on his great throne and commanded that tall, bright angel standing at his right hand, call me death. And that tall, bright angel cried in a voice that broke like a clap of thunder, Call death! Call death! And the echo sounded down the streets of heaven till it reached way back to that shadowy place where death waits with his pale white horse. And death heard the summons and he leaped on his fast horse, pale as a sheet in the moonlight. Up the golden street, death galloped, and the hoofs of his horse struck fire from the gold. And they didn't make no sound. Up death rode to the great white throne and waited for God's command. And God said, Go down, death. Go down, go down to Savannah, Georgia, down in Yamaha, and find Sister Caroline. She's borne the burden and the heat of the day. She's labored long in my vineyard, and she's tired. She's weary. Go down, death, and bring her to me. And death didn't say a word, but he loosened the reins of his pale white horse and clamped the spurs to his bloodless side. And out and down he rode through heaven's pearly gate, past sun and moon and stars, on death road, leaving the lightning's flash behind. Straight on down, he came. While we were watching round her bed, she turned her eyes and looked away. She saw what we could see. She saw old death. Yes, she saw old death coming like a falling star. But death didn't frighten Sister Caroline. He looked to her like a welcome friend. And she whispered to us, I'm going home. 
Then she smiled and closed her eyes. And death took her up like a baby. In his icy arms, but she didn't feel no chill. Then death began to ride again, up beyond the morning star, into the glittering light of glory, on to the great white throne. And there he laid Sister Caroline into the arms of Jesus. And Jesus took his own hand and wiped away her tears and smoothed the furrows from her face. And the angel sang. Jesus rocked her in his arms. Yes, he rocked her in his arms and kept her saying, Take your rest. Take your rest. Take your rest. Weep not. Weep not. She is not dead. She's resting in the bosom of Jesus. Jane. Your lover don't judge him. Sure you do. But she's not your kind, Jim. Oh, she's colored all right. But she's not common. Too bad. Too bad. Mrs. Bell, will you please watch out for me? I'll be back in a little while. Yes, Mr. Bottom, I will.
was a good woman, Jim. She was your friend. She raised your boy. She loved you like you were her very own. Remember how she sacrificed for you? Oh, God, how she loved you, Jim. And you, you killed her. You killed your best friend, Jim. You killed, killed, killed your best friend. The murder, Jim. She's gone, Jim. Has Caroline's gone to heaven? She's happy, Jim. Just like all good folks are happy when they go home. But look at you, Jim. You're happy too, aren't you? You've got those pictures. Those all-important pictures, remember? Now you can wreck the lives of good folks since you've killed to get those pictures. Now that you've got the pictures, you can prove your dirty lies. You've got the pictures. But boy, you killed to get them. Oh, Jim, the Lord has no mercy on killers. The Lord's got Aunt Caroline, Jim. Aunt Caroline's happy. Aunt Caroline's gone home to heaven. And you, Jim, you're going home too. What's more, you're leaving now. You're going to the home you deserve. Remember, to the home you deserve. Shoot! Shoot if you want to. But you can't kill me. For I am your conscience. See, Jim, I am part of you. Shoot! Shoot! Shoot if you like. I'll still be here. I'll always be here. Oh, you, Jim, that you can't leave me. I'm your friend. I'm you, boy. We were partners. We stay together. We can't leave each other. I is you. Don't be afraid of me, boy. You can trust me, because we're partners. That's what your conscience is, Jim. Your partner. But you, Jim, you killed Aunt Caroline. You killed your best friend. See that tree over yonder? I want to tell you something about that tree. Now listen. They once hung a man on this tree for killing a woman. And let me tell you this. It was this very limb right here. It's all enough to hang you to, Jim. Better go on from here. Go on. This ain't no place for you. Run, run. <laughs> run, run, run away, boy. <laughs> Run away. You gotta keep running. Always keep running. Cause you killed your best friend. Who's the hell to come after you? Always go after murders. They'll catch you, Jim. You gotta keep going. You can't rest. No rest for your run. Run. Ah, that's right. Keep running. 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 Ah, ah, ah. Thank you. 
we found him. He was at the head of Fox Canyon. He's dead. Oh, Jasper. And may God have mercy on his soul. Thank you.